You've all heard of the Kabbalion and the so-called Seven Hermetic Principles. Mentalism, Correspondence, Vibration, Polarity, Rhythm, Cause and Effect, and Gender. And surely by now you all know that the Kabbalion is by no means an ancient work, despite referring to itself as a study of Hermetic philosophy of ancient Egypt and Greece. It was originally published in 1908, and as most of you surely already know, the ideas it espouses were more so an expression of the doctrines of new thought than Hermeticism as it was understood in antiquity in such works as the Poimandries, the Asclepius, or the Discourse on the Eighth and Ninth, Nag Hammadi Codex 6.6. On account of this, some of you may even scoff at the idea that there are such a thing as hermetic principles at all. But what if I told you the Kabbalion at least wasn't the first book to put forward a series of hermetic principles as constitutive of the reality we all inhabit? There is, indeed, one such work, but it's medieval and not ancient, and it declares that there are only six principles responsible for our world, none of which, bar perhaps one, are by any means similar to those seven principles expounded upon throughout the Kabbalion. I'm talking, of course, about the Liber Hermetis de Sex Rerum Principiis, the Book of Hermes on the Six Principles of Things, or the DSRP for short. This work is part of a rather loose collection of Latin Hermetic texts that I'm in the process of translating as part of a team, and I wanted to give you a taste of its contents. During the 12th and 13th centuries, the Latin West experienced renewed interest in the study of both Greek and Arabic texts in translation, and along with it, a renewed interest in the figure of Hermes Trismegistus, particularly that Hermes, or Mercurius, with an aspect towards what we call technical hermetica, such as the kinds of astrological materials contained in Adelard of Bath's translation of Thabit ibn Kura's Liber Prestigiorum, a book of talismans, and John of Seville's translation of al Kabizi's Introductorius ad Magisterium Judiciorum Astrorum, both of which served as sources for the author of the DSRP. Other works of technical hermetica include the Picatrix, translated around 1256, the De Imaginibus, also translated by John of Seville, and the Cantiloquium of Hermes Trismegistus, compiled around 1262. These can be set apart from the more philosophical works of theoretical hermetica, such as the Asclepius and its commentary, the Glosae Super Trismegistum, or the Book of Twenty-Four Philosophers, with its famous definitions of God as a monad begetting a monad, or an infinite sphere whose center is everywhere, but circumference nowhere. Now, none of these texts were ancient, of course, but they were all attributed to Hermes, whether in whole or in part, which is why scholars today refer to them as Hermetica, even though they weren't part of the ancient Corpus Hermeticum with the exception of the Asclepius, which is an ancient Latin translation of the Greek Logos Teleos. The DSRP is one such book, composed in the 12th century, but attributed to Hermes, and comprising a wide array of what was, at the time, cutting-edge scientific ideas about the mechanisms which governed the world, and the causes which generated it. It was studied by the likes of the Platonist friar Thomas of York, and through him it became known by other Latin schoolmen like Berthold of Moosburg. But I don't want to get too deep into the weeds of inception and reception here. I simply want to introduce the text and give a brief introduction to the six principles it puts forward. The book begins as follows. We read in the old histories of divine men that there were three philosophers, the first of whom was Enoch, who was also called Hermes, and by another name, Mercurius. The other was Noah, who was similarly called Hermes and Mercurius. But the third was called 
Hermes Mercurius Triplex, because he flourished as a king, philosopher, and prophet. Indeed, after the flood, he ruled the kingdom of Egypt with the greatest fairness, excelled in the liberal and mechanical arts, and was the first to shed light on astronomy. He completed the Golden Wand, the Book of Longitude and Latitude, the Book of Election, and of Azik, that is, the rules on planetary alignment and the astrolabe, and many others through his brilliant work. Among his pastimes, this triplex, or trismegistus, was also the first to perform alchemy. Indeed, the supreme philosopher Morianus labored over his writings and began to investigate the secret nature of alchemy through long labor, and writing about it with subtlety, he finally composed his work. So, what are the six hermetic principles according to the DSRP? Surely they're not mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. Rather, they are 1. Tugaton nois, that is, to agathon nous, the good, the divine mind, or God, the cause of all. The second is reason, that is, ratio, which is the Latin word often used in place of the Greek logos, the rational ordering principle of the universe. The third is nature. The fourth, the world. The fifth, the mechanism of the world, or the world system. And six, time. The cosmology described by the work involves an outward procession, or emanation, out of Tugaton Nois, and it puts great emphasis on metaphysical, astronomical, and meteorological phenomena. At the root of all things is the good, the source of light and the seedbed of life, which is consubstantial with mind, the fullness of knowledge and the good of divine goodness, and also consubstantial with cause itself, that is, the cause of all causes. This divine mind is, quote, placed throughout the whole body of the world in the form of a circle and arranged at times internally, at others externally. It governs and composes all things, and for procreating and preserving all things, it does not cease to perpetuate them with a fiery and everlasting activity. There, in genus, in species, in individual singularity, everything that matter, the world, the world system, time, and the elements and gender in temporal things is circumscribed. There, the fabric of time, the chain of fate, the order of ages, the goal of all temporal things are inscribed by the finger of the supreme arbiter. There lies the knot of perpetuity for whatever extends in space consists in years, in centuries, in perpetuity, or in eternity. What consists of years is dissolved by oldness, in centuries, by an age, in perpetuity, by durability, in eternity, by infinity. Beginning from eternity, time is resolved in the bosom of eternity weary from its long circuit. To wit, it departs from unity to number, from stability to movement. Whatever is moved belongs to time. Whatever stretches into the immeasurable belongs to eternity, into which it has to be resolved. Thus the divine mind never abandons its duty due to weariness, but continues to sustain itself the world, and all things that are within the world by its perpetual and untiring mutability. Through this mind, therefore, the everlasting fires of the stars 
which, formed with the appearance of spherical roundness, swiftly complete their revolutions and orbits, and animated by the majesty of that divine mind, transmit the capacity for life to earthly bodies, and receive spirit from those sparks of perpetual soul. End quote. We have, then, a supernal triad of sorts. Tugaton nois, reason, and nature. Reason arises from tugaton nois, or cause, and nature arises from both cause and reason. The good, the divine mind, or the cause of all, forms the human intellect. Reason composes it, and nature establishes it. Reason is described as a certain force that proceeds from cause, ordering all things from the beginning. It's called the law of the stars, which is the equal and perpetual disposition of their motions, which produces and regulates the world system, through which the world and worldly things are governed, not by coercion, but by the benign peace of friendship. Nature is also said to be, quote, a certain universal and special vigor, born of cause and reason, first born in heaven, fourfold in universals and singulars, qualified and quantified, successively diffusing the different qualities of things. There is, of course, a subtle figura etymologica or etymological pun here at work that is lost in translation between the word natura, nature, and the Latin verb nascens or nascitur, being born or is born. But it was certainly not lost on our author. The world is formed by the reason of the divine mind, and it is, quote, the circular movement of nature, harmonious, universal, temporal, local, leaving nothing without, proportionately consisting of a centered quietude within, binding the opposing qualities of things with bonds. This movement of nature constitutes the mechanism of the world, or the world system, comprising of the stars and of the seven planets, and in their binding of opposing qualities with bonds, it generates the hot and cold, or wet and dry meteorological phenomena, which make different kinds of human, animal, and vegetable life possible here on Earth. Now, as you can probably tell, this is quite a different breakdown of the principles that constitute reality than those found in the Kabbalion. You might think to yourself that these six principles are rather materialist by contrast, and in some ways you may be correct. The DSRP was, after all, a work of science, or natural philosophy, as it was called in the 12th century. It was not a work of mysticism or theology. Its intentions were to lay out a model of the world that was predictive, not in a supernatural way, but in a way that was fully explainable within the bounds of nature, that is, with nature understood as the overflow of the first two principles, the divine mind and reason. Here the world is like a giant spiritual machine, whose systems can be understood mathematically thanks to its harmonious revolutions. The DSRP, heavily influenced by the writings of Firmicus Maternus, Macrobius, and Saul ibn Bishr, is concerned with the qualities of the celestial bodies, with the influences of the signs and planets, with lunar and solar eclipses, with weather phenomena, with the balancing of humors in man, and at last it closes with a practical discussion on the rules for using the astrolabe. In conclusion, while the DSRP shouldn't be thought of as some kind of proto kabbalion or as the book which contains the true hermetic principles, what it does do is offer us a fascinating glimpse into the intellectual landscape of the medieval Latin West. It stands as a testament to the enduring influence of the figure of Hermes Trismegistus on natural philosophy, 
as well as a window into the dynamic interplay between different cultures and ideas during the intellectual renaissance of the 12th century. While the Kabbalion and its esoteric expose of seven principles is far more familiar to most of us hermetically inclined 21st century people, the DSRP presents a different perspective on the nature of reality from within a radically different paradigm. Its six principles, Tugaton Nois, Reason, Nature, the World, the Mechanism of the World, and Time, reflect a scientific rather than a mystical approach to understanding the universe. And this reminds us that so-called hermetic works have not historically espoused a static doctrine, but a dynamic and evolving scientific tradition which combines the metaphysical and the physical, the spiritual and the material, and a tradition which is continually shaped by the intellectual and cultural contexts in which it is practiced. If you would like to support more work such as this, please visit patreon.com slash themodernhermeticist. And above all, thank you for watching.